Hello everyone, this is Data Talks presented by Dun & Bradstreet. I'm your host, George LaRue. I'm a principal consultant for data strategy here in the advisory services team at Dun & Bradstreet. And in advisory services, our team is dedicated to helping our clients to maximize the value of their relationship with Dun & Bradstreet through expert advice and consultation. On Data Talks, I chat every episode with one of the expert advisors at Dun & Bradstreet about a topic that can help consumers of our data and services to get more value. Today's guest expert is Sita Nathan, a senior solution design consultant at Dun & Bradstreet. Now, Sita, how long have you been with the company? Approximately 14 years. Could you tell me a little bit about what it is that you do in your current role as a solution design consultant? Sure. So a solution design consultant is, supports both the pre and the post sales engagements. Uh, we are close partnership with both our sales teams as well as our clients, where we provide them with best practices, leveraging a consultative approach in order to address their needs or their requirements that they have. Uh, focus primarily being on defining the solutions that optimally solve client problems, as well as being able to enhance the sales process using a consultative technical expertise on the DNB integrated products and offerings. Thanks so much for that explanation, Sita. So today's topic is really an important one for us, and it's one that just about every organization is going to face at some point or another, and that is a technology migration. And so let's start really with the basics. Why are these such a big deal? What types of challenges are our customers going to face when they go to do a migration? So when everybody talks about migration, everyone gets a lot nervous about it because everyone has a different view of or a perspective about migrations, right? There are three critical perspectives that one needs to think about, data, technology, and the user, because users are the people who get finally impacted when we do these migrations. So when we talk about the user, there are multiple things that one needs to be thoughtful about and to understand, you know what, what are the some of the things that changes that would impact their day to day life. So this becomes a really critical, important play, which we really do not take into consideration and we need to bring it very upfront in the process as we go through this. So, so let's make sure that we do that. Let's take a, a little bit of a deep dive in each of those perspectives, the data, the technology, and as you point out, the user. For each of them, what are some of the things that we need to be considering? Yeah, so let's start with, I like I could call them the three legs of the stool, right? The data part. To understand the data that is being impacted by or will be impacted for the client. This is a real critical partnership that has to happen between the client as well as the provider in order for us to be able to get together and assess the needs of them. Understanding what are they getting today and what they will be getting tomorrow. What are the differences in the data? What are some of the rules they have to build in as they go through the process? A technology perspective. So a technology is usually many clients are now migrating from an older technology to more of the modern technology, which is like a REST-based API. With this shift in technology, there are critical aspects that one needs to think about, like the resources and how it to implement this, because this uh, the older technologies have different type of resource uh, type of criteria required versus the newer technologies. The user interface. This is where one needs to think about how this new user interface. Do you want to keep the same interface or do you want to change it? They will be naming convention differences, right? Because of the way the industry has moved. So we need to say many clients want to move towards the best practices in there. How the placement of these uh, output data is going to be what are some of the changes because there may be updates to the models that may have happened so that could cause changes within the within what the data the user is going to see so we need to bring them early into this journey and help these users to be able to understand not just the data but also the technology that we are moving towards so these three really play a big deal as we move towards migration so something that you just mentioned about bringing the users on the journey earlier. So when you're thinking about so many different aspects, these three legs of the stool like you're talking about, when is the right time to start having these sorts of discussions? So this is a very, um, this topic becomes very controversial and it also depends. If this is being driven by the provider due to a platform change, then you might need as much of a advance notice like a year. OK, because everybody needs to plan it out, make sure that they are part of this. Uh, the changes are part of a major release because this will require budgeting 
resource planning, and all the different uh, criteria that go with any technology improvements that happen. So we need to work with the partner as well as the vendor to ensure that everybody understands these changes and give enough notification for them. If it's a customer is making the change, then there may be lesser time because some of these things may already have been taken into consideration, right? Like they may, they would have already got the resources, the funding, they would have a high level architecture plan. They would know where this is going to fit within their release schedule. So it could vary anywhere between eight to 12 weeks or even longer, but it all is driven by a combination of, you know, uh, or the client as well as the partner and who is driving this migration. So that seems like a big difference, right? The difference between say maybe a quarter's worth of time and a year's worth of time. It makes me believe that maybe the actual migration to the new technology really isn't the biggest part of the equation, isn't the biggest driver. Would you say that that's correct? Yes, I would say yes. Integrating an API, for example, is not the real issue, right? The bigger part of this is understanding the content, and that is very critical. Understanding what the new rules are, getting enough context and understanding to ensure that the data that is being delivered into this new system is becomes actionable and becomes something that, are, that the user can be able to understand and drive towards their end goal that they're trying to achieve. So that is the critical piece of it. So it seems like all of this planning is really designed to try and avoid getting tripped up, being, you know, stumbling over some unexpected difference that exists between the old system and the new one that didn't get detected earlier. So what types of changes might these be? What might a user see that's different and that you need to be on the lookout for? So they could be some that is as uh, small as a difference in saying an indicator, right? Today we may be giving an if a flag that says yes or no. Tomorrow that same flag would have been changed to true or false. We assume that this is a very minor change. It could be, but you have to think about not just the system that you're migrating, but also the downstream system because it could have a big impact in there. Another one is also talking about the sales data because this I've seen a lot, right? So many clients, you need to firstly understand the use case and say, what is that sales data? Is it actual or that they're getting today? Or is it something, what is the use case? What is the purpose? If it's a marketing use case, they could have been um, getting estimated or modeled, right? So because the sources that we have been pulling from a migration perspective may have changed. So understanding those kinds of subtlety is very important. And the third one that I'm seeing also is the small business indicator. What use case is this for? How are the clients leveraging this? Is this for a supplier use case where you need the data from a supplier database, right? Because that way it's a certified small business indicator versus a small business indicator which is used from a marketing perspective. So all these may seem like small changes, but it's really not. It causes a lot of churn in the system. So you need to be aware of it, make the user aware of this, and some and sometimes this is more painstaking if you don't do some of this due diligence processes. So Sita, can you share with me some of the best practices that you've observed or even used yourself when performing a technology migration or some sort of integration project? What are those? So a technology migration in general is driven by the technology teams. Okay, while an integration migration can start from a business and bring the technology teams along the ride, right? So they're definitely separate migration efforts from a testing efforts. The first thing is always include business users in testing. That's why the beta testing that we call once it's developed is very important. Make sure that the, you gather all the documentation, whether it's an API documentation or how you can create a user documentation. The next thing is you, all the three teams have to work together in partnership, the technology, the business, and the users. Each one will have a different role to play and will be brought in, um, in different points of the project, but it is very important that you listen to all three of them and make sure that you define what that documentation is required and, and provide them as early as possible. And the clients also will have this as, a, as something to be left behind after the migration is done, right? So, uh, and finally, the last one is having a project plan. 
And this project plan should be twofold. One is a high level summary plan and the second one is a detailed plan to ensure that we are capturing all the critical components that need to make this into a successful migration. So digging a little bit deeper, are there any big differences between migrating from one vendor to another versus say migrating from one platform to another within the same vendor? Are the, do you approach those differently? Absolutely. So when you migrate from one vendor to another vendor, right, there's a lot of differences. There, one could be from a uh, technology perspective, right, of of the migration, of how that is, what what tech what tech stacks each of the uh, vendors have. The second one is the data differences. The third one is how, especially from a DNB perspective, how we do entity identification. Our entity identification has a method of how we do that, right? Whereas other vendors have a different methodology. So having all these different types of components, you will see there is a variation and it de definitely causes a lot of discussion that we need to work through during this process. Any migration is going to be a collaborative effort, as you've, uh, as you've already alluded to. But in the end, who's ultimately responsible when you've got a client and vendor and even maybe a separate technology team all working together like this? So at the end of the day, the client is the uh, point of contact. They are responsible. But the vendor needs to be very consultative and make sure the client understands and provides the client with enough documentation so that they can be able to drive that migration. Okay. Um, the vendor as such needs to say what are the constraints and what are the assumptions that we are working on from that from the vendor's perspective and the client also needs to be very articulate to say what is this migration use case about and what are the goals and uh, objectives they're trying to achieve having this three-way partnership between the business the vendor and the technology team is very critical in the component because sometimes the technology team is in-house sometimes it's a third-party vendor but all three of them working together is the critical part when you're doing a migration. So, so finally, I, I think one thing that we've all seen and done and that we know is pretty good practice is to run things in parallel. Run your old technology stack and your new technology stack in parallel for a while. But how long should we be doing that? What do you recommend? So this will vary anywhere from six to 12 months, right? Uh, it all depends on the project and the resources a client have. If it's a smaller project, I would say it it would could be done within six months. And uh, but if it's larger project which involves you know just not one component of migration because they may have opened up the hood. Say it's an MDM project, they've opened up the hood, but there is a small piece of migration that's part of it, right? Then it could take a longer time. But in general, I think everybody needs to be aware it's it's not just the migration piece of it but the post migration like once everything is deployed then run this for the next two three months so that you know what you are very you're very comfortable in the thought that any issues that come up post migration can be resolved while you're not disrupting the the current uh, processes that the users are, are working through so Sita, as we get set to wrap up here, what's one thing that you would want someone who's watching this or listening to this today to walk away remembering, to have learned? Yeah, don't be afraid of migrations. It's something that everybody needs to go through this journey in order to be able to uh, get more information and insight and be able to better uh, get, you know, come up to with the better technologies that are available because all these are something that yes it is challenging but at the end of the day you can overcome it by working together between the client the vendor and the technology team working together in as a team we can be able to drive it will there be issues absolutely but we can all work together to solve it see what options are there and then um, have a successful migration our guest expert today has been Sita Nathan, a senior solution design consultant at Dun & Bradstreet, and this has been Data Talks. If you've enjoyed today's discussion, and we hope you have, please let a friend or a colleague know about it. And if you'd like more information about what we discussed on today's episode, please visit www.dnb.com or reach out to your company's Dun & Bradstreet specialist today. I'm George LaRue. Thanks for joining us. Until next time.